Welcome to making video games with Python Lesson 16. In this video, we're going to explore how we could take the basic game loop in order to create more engaging start and ending screens. So let's get to it. So just a little bit of review of how the basic game loop works. So we have a while loop that continues running as long as the game is not over. Uh, we do a little process of input. Uh, we draw some background, we draw some graphics, uh, and then at the very end we do a game.update and then we quit right afterwards. So this is kind of like our basic game loop. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to essentially create another game loop. Game.over. We can do the same. Game.process, input. We're going to do our game.update. And we're going to leave it at that. And I'm just going to put a little comment here. And we're going to call this our start screen. As compared to this basic game loop, which will be our play screen. Again, a while loop is a while loop. The, the program really doesn't care that we use multiple game loops as part of our overall game. So what we're going to do up here is let's uh, let's grab this right here. Actually, let's grab both of these. And I just want you to see that we're going to be in this while loop when we first start up. All right, so this is our start screen. So this is actually the game yet. Uh, so this is where we're going to be able to kind of, you know, get the user to kind of see that this is the game, give them a little instructions as to how to maybe start the game, how to play the game. All right, so let's see, what else can we add to it? Um, I almost forgot to add the bar. Bar.draw. Yeah, like a spell draw. And you'll notice that I actually have uploaded two more pictures. Uh, so let's do that one as well. Let's do logo dot draw and we'll save the game over for later in our in our game so see how this looks all right so looking a, a lot better uh, i'm going to move this up a little bit so let's go over here and let's do a logo dot y of maybe 100 and the next thing we're going to need to do you know usually when games you know, are on their start screen, they usually give you a little text that says, you know, do this in order to start the game. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's do a game dot draw text of, let's say, press space to start. And let's put it at, I don't know, let's say 100. And let's use game dot height minus 80 <laughs> and then let's go ahead and use that same font that we've been using uh, for the score let's see what that looks like all right not too bad we could probably move it over a little bit more so let's say maybe 120 but before we run it again now we have to add that functionality because notice we're asking the user to press start uh, uh, to press space in order to start so we're going to have to add an if statement that says if keys pressed. And let's check to see if the user actually pressed the space bar. Notice this is the same if statement that we're using as part of our bird. Except that on the start screen, when the person presses the, um, the space bar, what we want to do is we want to get out of this game loop. So if you recall, the same way we got out of the game loop here, on the play screen was to set our game over equal to true. So we're going to do the same thing here. Game over equals true. All right. So once the person presses space, game over equals true, we should get out of this loop. Now there's something that's going to happen. Hopefully you could kind of maybe anticipate how this might cause a problem here, but I'm going to show that to you. All right, so we're good here. We're on the start screen. I'll press start, and the game ends. Well, let's think about what happened here. 
We put game over equals to true in order to get out of this game loop. But the problem is that once we get to the actual play screen, the program thinks that the game is over. So what we're going to have to do when we come out of this game screen is to reset game over equal to false. Like, hey, game, you're not over yet. That was just the start screen. So let's see if that kind of fixes our problem of being able to exit the start screen and now get to play the uh, actual game. All right, so just to kind of reiterate, right now we are in this first while loop, this first game loop. And that's the reason we're able to kind of animate the background, the animation is running, and it's listening for us to press the space bar. So let's do that. Now that I've pressed the space bar, I'm gonna try to do it here without dying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so once I press the space bar, we were in the game uh, screen. So now it's running all of this code. So what we want to do is we also want to do something similar to uh, the start screen, uh, but then do it for the game over screen. So let's go ahead and copy that code. And let's go over here. And we'll say that this is our game over screen. Now, because this is also another while loop, we're going to run into the same problem that in order for us to get out of this game loop, we had to set game over equal to true, which is great. Again, we get out of the loop. But now when we go into the game over screen, it's thinking, OK, while well, not game over. But guess what? We just set it, over, set it to true. So it might feel a little weird to have to constantly reset the game over to false. And that's simply because we are reusing this variable um, as part of our loop. And I'll tell you what, now that we're in the game over screen, pretty much everything stays the same. You know, the basic game loop of process the input, scroll the background. Uh, instead of doing the logo.draw, let's take that other image that we loaded up, which is the game over logo. So let's draw that one. Game over logo. Uh, we'll keep the bar, we'll keep the bird, we'll keep the space, uh, except that we're going to change this up to quit. All right, so let's see that. All right, so I'm going to try to get this all happening at the same time. Okay, so right now we are in that start screen basic game loop. And it's waiting for us to press the space bar in order for us to set game over equal to true, which gets us out of this loop. Once we get out of this loop, we got to set it back to false so that this loop is now ready to start the game. All right, so let's see that. All right, so now we're in the second game loop, and I'm playing the game. Not a problem. And the minute I crash, this game over sets to true allowing us to now exit the play screen game loop and enter now this one. Notice, recall, we had to put the game over back to false so that this game loop always works. And, and that's where we're at right now. Uh, so you can see here the nice little game over uh, graphics uh, and everything else is still animated, which is nice. Instead of just having those static, you know, start and end screens, now we can have, uh, you know, start and end screens that are a little more engaging. So if I press the space, uh, space bar to quit, at this point we're going to say game over equals true, and that will be the final game dot over, because uh, then the very next statement after this game loop is game dot quit. And that's it. All right, so let's go back to our presentation. Let's review what we've done. So we saw in this video how we can use that basic game loop uh, to kind of create more engaging start and end screens. We also saw that in between each of these basic game loops, we had to keep resetting the game dot over to false so that the next loop could activate. Again, this might take a little bit of practice, uh, and, but hopefully kind of expand your mind that that basic game loop isn't just for the game. It could really be used for any section of your game that requires code to be repeated. So hopefully you're excited about completing Flappy Birds and enjoy.